Bacterial Growth and Reproduction Bacterial Growth Requirements Bacteria requires oxygen and some bacteria doesn't require oxygen. Temperature, pH, nutrients, water and osmotic pressure. Depending upon the oxygen requirement, there are four types of bacteria. Obligate aerobes, obligate anaerobes, microaerophilic, facultative anaerobes. Obligate aerobes, they require oxygen for their growth to produce energy. Most of the obligate aerobes, they consist of cytochrome C oxidase enzyme. And you can see oxidative phosphorylation in them. And there won't be any fermentation. The ATPs won't be formed by performing fermentation. Obligate anaerobes. Obligate anaerobes always produces ATPs by fermentation. Oxygen is toxic to this obligate anaerobes. They can't grow in presence of oxygen. And most of the times the obligate anaerobes, they lack these enzymes like catalase, superoxide, dismutase, peroxidase enzymes. And always these enzymes depends upon the oxygen. So these anaerobes, obligate anaerobes, they lack these enzymes normally. There is no oxidative phosphorylation occurs in obligate anaerobes. They always produce ATPs by fermentation. Facultative anaerobes. They always perform aerobic respiration. The ATPs are produced by oxidative phosphorylation and they survive in presence of oxygen. Without oxygen also they can survive by performing fermentation. So they are called as facultative anaerobes. They are aerobic in nature. Microaerophilic organisms, they won't utilize oxygen. In presence of minor concentration of oxygen surrounding them, they can survive. But with high concentration surrounding them, most of the time they will get destroyed. The high oxygen concentration surrounding them is toxic to this microaerophilic organisms. So most of the time you can have human pathogens comes and most of the time they are facultative anaerobes. A lot of human bacterial pathogens are facultative anaerobes. Fewer anaerobic, fewer uh, microaerophilic and uh, fewer anaerobic organisms. But majority of them are facultative anaerobes. Depending upon the temperature we have five types of uh, bacterial organisms. So organisms which are growing at uh, a freezing temperatures that is minus 10 to 20 degrees centigrade temperature they are called as psychrophiles. They, they grow at uh, freezing temperatures. Whereas the organisms which are growing at uh, 0 to 30 degrees centigrade temperature they are called as psychrotrophs. And the organisms which are growing at 10 degrees to 50 degrees centigrade temperatures they are called as mesophiles. Most of the human pathogens comes under these mesophiles. The organisms which are growing at higher temperatures from 40 to 70 degrees centigrade temperatures they are called as thermophiles and the organisms which are growing at extreme high temperatures that is uh, between 65 degrees centigrade temperatures and uh, more than 100 degrees centigrade temperatures they are called as hyperthermophiles. Depending upon the pH we have three varieties of uh, bacterial organisms. The organism which likes to grow at uh, acidic pH low pH levels they are called as acidophiles from 1 to 4.5 level 5 pH the organisms which are growing at this pH acidic pH we can call them as acidophiles whereas the neutrophiles they grow at a neutral pH between 5.5 and 8 and 8 and 8.5 those organisms which are growing at these <coughs> neutral pH they are called as neutrophiles whereas alkalophiles most of them they grow at alkalinity high alkalinity that is between 7.5 and more than 11 pH higher pH they are called as alkaliphiles. The nutrients that are required for the bacterium are carbon the major nutrients carbon nitrogen phosphorus sulfur vitamins and minerals metal ions especially the iron iron uh, some bacteria they always uh, carry one structure with them that is siderophores siderophores these siderophores always attract the iron molecules from the host cells especially the important bacteria that always uh, have siderophores are mycobacterium tuberculosis 
and uh, Eustachia coli. These two organisms, they always carry the sideropods, which can take the iron from the host. So whenever they have a low iron in their surrounding environment, uh, they comfortably start to replicate. That's why these sideropods help this organism in their replication and growth. So moisture and osmotic pressure, water and osmotic pressure. <coughs> For all metabolically active bacteria, they require water because the major cytoplasm, the cytoplasm consists of a lot of water. So this water is required for most nutrients and waste products uh, which are soluble inside this water and through this soluble nutrients, they can cross the cytoplasmic membrane. They can cross the cytoplasmic membrane by dissolving inside the water so that's why all bacteria uh, requires water for their metabolic activity whereas the osmotic pressure for most of the bacteria is 0.9 percent salinity whereas there are some bacteria which we'll call it as halophilic organism they can live at high alkalinity situation or high uh, salinity conditions so the major important halophilic organisms are a vibrio group of organisms which always lives in high salinity conditions. So bacterial growth. The bacterial growth can be estimated depending upon the number, not by size. Growth by number, not by size. So before we enter, before we discuss about this bacterial growth, we must familiarize with few terms. The first one is culture media. Culture media is nothing but the nutrients prepared for microbial growth is called as culture media. The nutrients which are required for the organism to grow outside of the human or outside of the host, we can call it as a culture media. And this culture media has always has to be sterile before the entry of this organism, before we inoculate the organism into the culture media. Inoculum. Inoculum is nothing but the microbes introduced into the media are called as inoculum. The culture, the microbes growing in or on the culture media, we can call it as culture. So the three terms are culture media. The nutrient material which is required for the growth of the bacterial organism outside of the host is called as culture media. So always it has, it has to be sterile without any organisms inside it before we inoculate the bacteria. The next one is inoculum. Microbes that are introduced are going to be introduced into the medium. We can call it as inoculum. Culture. Microbes growing in or on culture media are called as culture so next term is liquid media and solid media so what is this liquid media the liquid media is a fluid nutrient material to grow the bacteria outside of the host so this liquid media is mainly <coughs> prepared from the meat extract the crystal clear liquid which is extracted from the meat and this crystal clear liquid with which is extracted from the meat we'll call it as nutrient broth whenever this nutrient broth is mixed with uh, sodium chloride and pepton water we will get the liquid media in this liquid media we can make the bacterial organism to grow but uh, we can't see the colonies we can't see the colonies and most of the time the liquid media widely used majorly for observing the motility of the organisms Whereas solid media, whenever this liquid media is mixed with agar, agar is a, uh, a material which is extracted from seaweed. Whenever the agar is added to the liquid medium, the liquid medium becomes into a solid or semi-solid or a jelly type of material. That material will call it a, that media will call it a solid media. There are different varieties of solid media. One is blood agar, widely used in bacteriology to grow the bacteria. Mekonsky agar, chocolate agar, and there is a lot of different agars, TCBS medium, etc. Bacterial growth or growth curve. So the phases that occurs during the growth of the bacteria in a specific medium 
in microbiology lab we can three we can see four phases in bacterial growth those are lag phase exponential or logarithmic phase stationary phase death phase or decline phase so if you see this graph if you see this graph it has a curve here it represents the growth of the bacteria on a culture media with optimal requirements without adding any extra nutrient materials so what happens is whenever you inoculate some bacteria onto the culture media this bacteria will take, take some time to start to replicate during this time what happens is that time that is the bacteria that is taking before it start to replicate we can call it as lag phase during this lag phase what happens is the bacteria start to uh, make its own enzymes which is useful for replication the bacteria start to make proteins which are useful for replication so during this phase the bacteria prepares itself to replicate so the period of preparation before replication to replicate we can call it as lag phase so different bacteria will have uh, different time periods of lag phase next one is exponential phase or logarithmic phase this logarithmic phase after this lag phase the bacteria start to replicate by binary fission one organism start to divide into two and two can um, divide into four four can divide into eight so in that way exponential way the bacterial number increases so you can see the in this growth curve the ex during the exponential phase the growth curve increases that means the number of bacteria are increasing in an exponential way so after certain period it will enters into the third phase called stationary phase so during this phase what happens is the culture media the bacteria which are grown here by exponential way they utilize lot of nutrients in this culture media they start to produce lot of metabolic waste products into this culture media what happens is due to, due to decrease in amount of nutrients and due to increase in amount of waste materials you can start to see stationary phase the number of bacteria that are replicating and the number of bacteria that are dying is equal the number of bacteria that are destructing because of waste materials the number of bacteria are getting destructed because of lack of nutrients a lot of bacteria are start to destruct and some bacteria are replicating the number of bacteria that are replicating are pro synthesizing and the amount of bacteria the number of bacteria that are destructing are equal here that's why you can see this graph is stationary in nature without altering or increasing or decreasing stationary phase so after this stationary phase after few hours what happens is the bacteria start to utilize all the nutrients and there won't be any more nutrients in the culture medium at that point of time the bacteria have a lot of waste produce lots of waste materials and most of the culture media will get accumulated with waste materials then the bacteria won't have any nutrients so at that point of time because of toxic effects of waste material the bacteria start to get uh, destructed so you can see the last phase declining phase so there are four phases in bacterial growth so we can represent that four phases with bacterial growth curve one is lag phase exponential phase stationary phase and death phase or decline phase generation time generation time is the time for bacterial mass to do double so for one bacteria to become into two bacteria by binary fission the time duration for making into two we can call it as generation time for example we can calculate like this 100 bacteria present at uh, time 0 so if the generation time is uh, 2 hours so in this 2 hours one bacteria is changing into two bacteria it is producing two bacteria by binary fission so after 8 hours how many bacteria you can see in that uh, medium so how we can calculate it as it is 100 times 2 to the power of 4 2 to the power of 4 is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 that means altogether 16 100 times 16 is equal to 1600 
so after eight hours you can see 1600 organisms in that culture medium so measuring the microbial growth how we can measure there are two basic ways two basic simple principles there are a lot of varieties but just two same simple varieties are by calculating a by solid media the organisms which are grown on solid media the live bacteria we can calculate here we can represent here it's a culture media and the organisms are grown as colonies here so you can take one colony here and you can count the organisms under the microscope by after staining them or else we can also measure the microbial growth by liquid medium so in liquid medium you can uh, count the live and dead bacteria depending upon the cloudiness inside the liquid medium so you can see in the right side picture you have a test tube here with the liquid medium so on the in this liquid medium the inoculated bacteria are replicated here you can see a lot of particles bacterial organisms here so by increasing number of bacterial organism in this crystal clear fluid fluid medium the fluid medium after the growth of the bacteria it changes or it appears like a cloudy in nature how cloudy in nature whenever it is exposed to a spectrometer spectrometer the light is beamed onto this test tube so the light reflections goes to the spectrometer and we can count the number of organisms so by by observing the number of or by counting the number of organisms we can know how many bacteria are there but we don't know how many bacteria are alive and how many bacteria are dead by fluid medium or liquid medium bacterial reproduction bacterial reproduction majorly the prokaryotic genome of the bacteria has very less dna when compared to eukaryotic genome so most of the genome of bacteria is in circular form circular chromosome so some species of bacteria always have a smaller smaller ring of dna called a smaller piece of dna called plasmids they always carry plasmids some bacteria very few species of bacteria so you can see a binary fission bacteria normally replicate by binary fission you can see the organisms the bacteria this is the bacterial organism the replication starts in the genome at one area called we can call that area as uh, the origin so you can see the origin the st replication starts here it is divided and you can start to see the genetic material is separating dividing replicating and two gen genomes are formed and the cell envelope start to get invaginated at the center to separate these two genomes so ultimately you can get two organisms two identical exactly identical organism by binary fission you can get exactly identical organism with identical genome so prokaryotes have considerable genetic variation you can see genetic diversity so there are three factors that contribute to this genetic diversity that is rapid reproduction mutation genetic recombination rapid reproduction and mutation prokaryotes reproduce by binary fission and the offspring cells are generally identical because they have exact genome and they have the exact structure mutation rates during binary fission are very low but because of rapid reproduction mutations can accumulate rapidly in a population so whenever the bacteria are replicating with a faster pace you can see mutations high diversity from mutations allowed for rapid evolution next one is genetic recombination genetic recombination is in three forms in bacteria one is transformation transduction conjugation we can see one small animation 